What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and I wanted to go over some new liquid culture techniques. Um, we got this cool little device from Lion's Mane um, in downtown Denver. Shout out to Lion's Mane. Check out that store if you're in the area. Um, this is a really nifty tool that is going to come in handy for making our liquid cultures. So Matt, the owner, created this. Um, he's calling it the media extractor. I'm really excited about it. Basically, it's a aseptic way to um, remove your liquid culture. So if you attach it to um, a lure lock pipette like this glass one we have here, then you can consistently pull out um, liquid cultures without, you know, tipping the jar over or fishing with the lid, which takes a lot of time. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to be testing it out in these two liter media bottles. And I've got some Morcella or Morel um, mycelium that I've been expanding for a couple years. And my hopes is to continue to inoculate this around my yard. Um, I'm going to be growing it in these giant media bottles and then extracting parts of mycelium and diluting them into buckets so I can inoculate it in my yard. So these tops can also go on these two liter bottles. And I'm also going to be expanding some Cordyceps Militaris culture that I have here. Um, so it's another really good technique if you have to inoculate a lot of jars with liquid culture. So I'm gonna be doing a little Cordyceps experiment here and utilizing this media extraction device. I'm really excited to test this out. And for those of you who have been following me, you know that I love Bjorn's honey. Um, this is what I use in all my liquid cultures, just honey and Colorado Rocky Mountain water. Um, this is local honey from Boulder, Colorado. Shout out to Bjorn's. Um, it's the best honey in the world and there's just something really cool about using honey and mycelium and bees and mushrooms. I think that it really all goes together and it might be the key to you know future agriculture. So I'll go ahead and mix up that liquid culture and get these sterilized and then I'll go through how to operate this media extractor. Alright guys, so I'm going to make my 4% liquid culture solution using Bjorn's honey. Um, it's just raw honey from Boulder, Colorado. Like I said before, I prefer using honey. I've used, you know, tryptocase soy um, with and without antibiotics before, buffered peptone, and I think that honey is, you know, the cheapest thing and it's what nature provides. So, we're going to add 40 grams Forty grams per liter. There you go, 40.8, that's pretty good. And then I like to just add warm water. And then mix it really thoroughly with a whisk. Thank you. 
as easy as that. Alright guys, so you can see I've got two liters of liquid culture ready and I'm going to add these stir bars to the media bottles. Um, so these are important so that you can mix your liquid culture without stirring um, or without shaking. They're not completely necessary, especially with these bottles that have this uh, media ring right here. So it's not necessary, it's just a convenience. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and exchange the lids here since I'm not going to be using this smaller bottle. Um, just to show you guys how easy it is to switch that over to a 2 liter media bottle. So I'm just using this same same lid here and all right so I've got my liter two liter media bottles loaded up in the presto pressure cooker um, for sterilization I'm gonna sterilize these for 20 minutes and make sure that these are backed off a little bit so that it doesn't build pressure um, I you could probably get up to you know 1600 um, mils in one of these bottles but I don't need that much so I'm just going to use a liter So we've got our liquid cultures sterilized and they're just cooling off right now. Um, you want to make sure that those get down to room temp before you add any kind of uh, mycelium. And right now they're at 174 or whoop, 175. So that's a little too warm. I'm probably going to wait till tomorrow and um, inoculate these liquid cultures. What's up guys? So I let these bottles cool overnight. Um, it's reading about 80 degrees right now, which is you know a little on the warmer side, but it should be fine. Um, the best practice for when you're making your liquid cultures is you would want to leave these at you know room temperature for about four or five days and they should remain clear. Um, you can see right now that there's no sediment in here. It's uh, pretty transparent, which is another reason why I like using honey. Um, some of the other broths out there have chunks or people like to add you know, sawdust, which kind of hides any potential contamination. So the better the honey, the clearer the solution and it will remain like this um, for months and months as long as it's sterile but since these morels are going to be going outside anyway um, i'm just going to dump these into here and then show you guys how i incubate my liquid cultures so i'll just go ahead and take this cap set it over here mycelium right there so that is uh, morchella or morel species um, I'm gonna wait you know a few days to QC this um, liquid culture and, all right so there is the mycelium in solution right there and then I'm gonna incubate this for about three or four days by placing it on the stir plate here So 
I'll come back in a couple days and show you um, inoculating our cordyceps, which I like to use slants because cordyceps degrade very quickly. Um, in about two or three generations, they'll start to get mutated. So it's really important to keep your cordyceps on slants. And I'll go for my slant directly into my liquid culture. And then I'll use this media extractor to inoculate a similar you know, number of jars like this very quickly. Um, Alright guys, so it's been about 90 hours or so and um, I'll zoom in on this liquid culture. You can see how clear it is right now. Uh, if there's any kind of bacteria or yeast, it would be very cloudy. Uh, you can see that the liquid is still transparent. So I'm going to go ahead and add the cordyceps um, slant culture to my liquid culture. And you can see behind there the uh, morcella that's been mixing for a couple days. It's starting to get quite thick, so I'm pretty excited for that. Alright, so I've got my cordyceps culture slant right here. You can see how healthy that mycelium is. One important factor when you're um, observing cordyceps mycelium is that you want to make sure that it's still kind of white. One of the signs that's degrading or it's about to thin is that that mycelium will start to turn orange or yellow. Which, um, when you grow the cordyceps, you any exposure to light for you know 24 to 72 hours is going to cause that mycelium to turn yellow. So that's a normal feature of the cordyceps, but I always make sure that mine's uh, still white and healthy. Um, so I'm gonna open this slant up. I'm just gonna check out one more time, make sure there's not any contamination. And you can see how nice and clear that mycelium is. Super healthy. I'm going to be cutting a piece near the top so that I don't have to go deep into the slant and possibly contaminate any of it. So I'm going to be selecting my culture from up near the top. Of my media extractor. Um, you could just be using the normal lid right now, too. And then I'm just going to pop it in there. And then I'll switch this out with my morel, my ceiling. You can see how nice and healthy that's looking. So that's going to start mixing around and growing cordyceps mycelium. So once that grows out in a couple days, I'll do my quality control on it and then I'll show you how to use this media extractor um, with this nice pipette here. What's up, guys? So it's been about two days now and that cordyceps culture has got some growth. So I'm gonna go ahead and QC that. Um, I'll QC see that today. And then since um, this morcella is definitely starting to thicken up, I'm gonna make some sawdust spawn that I'm gonna be putting some of this morcella and I'll show you guys, you know, the whole capabilities of this uh, media extractor. So first I'll do my QC and then I'm gonna um, re-sterilize this one more time before I use it 
um, to inoculate a bunch of grain spawn or uh, sawdust spawn and I I'll do some grain spawn too just to test that out in the um, outside but this is morel liquid culture that is almost ready okay guys so it's been about 48 56 hours since I inoculated my cordyceps liquid culture and I've got my um, blood auger plate to test for bacteria and then I've got my um, HE hectoin auger plate for salmonella E. coli so this is what I'm going to QC uh, my cordyceps liquid culture um, no sense in inoculating a bunch of grain if uh, this comes out with anything so I always uh, QC my liquid culture first and then once we QC these I'm going to re-sterilize this media extractor and then um, I'll be putting it on the Morel liquid culture and running this on sawdust, grain spawn, and I'm just going to put some diluted amounts of liquid culture in buckets and inoculate that um, directly outside. Alright, so the first step is um, taking out this pipette which has been sterilized. You can see I like using these steam sterilizers. It turns it gray um, so it's a, a good double check for your autoclave or pressure cooker. And um, I got this really nice glass pipette so you don't need too much um, but it's going to take a minute to prime the pump here. So the nice thing about this media extractor, you can see how easy that was. Um, so you can see how easy that was and you can leave it spinning. So a lot of times when I'm doing um, my liquid cultures out of jars, it doesn't mix as well so you're not getting a complete sample whereas if you have the stir bar going and the hose at the bottom there you're getting a more homogeneous sample for your QC so I'll just go ahead and put a couple mils on the plate and kind of let that liquid go all around and then these will be incubating for about three to five days in the incubator at 72 degrees Fahrenheit and that way I'll know if there's any bacteria that's growing in here but from the looks of it it's probably going to be negative um, you could see how clear that liquid is if there was any bacteria it would turn like a milky color um, or yeast yeast often does that too so I'm going to go ahead and um, take this off here and I'll just replace with a sterile cap um, and I'll let that keep on incubating so then I'm going to sterilize this guy um, one more time and then we're going to inoculate a bunch of spawn and dilute out some of this mycelium um, using the media extractor. Alright, what's up guys? So it's uh, three days into after I took the sampling of these cordyceps and surprisingly I found some bacteria. Um, so that's why it's important to QC your liquid cultures. Uh, you can see the graininess. Here's the morchella that's growing. Um, see how the top, you can still see it's kind of clear. And then if you come over to the cordyceps culture, it's a little clear, but you can see down low, this is really granular. Um, it doesn't look like healthy mycelium and it kind of plumes around when you shake it up. So that's a good indication that there's some bacteria. But if you look at the blood auger plate, 
you can see some colonies right here. So there's, you know, six colonies, maybe 600 CFUs, which um, probably didn't look like much when I was taking out um, the sample for quality control. But over the next few days, it kind of blossomed into this big bloom. Um, and then if I look at the salmonella and E. coli plate, that is clean. So I know that it's not, you know, salmonella and E. coli, which is really good. It could be some staphylococcus from my hands or my skin that got in there. Um, staph will grow on this blood agar plate, or it could even be some beneficial bacteria that I don't know about that lives in the cordyceps. Either way, I'm gonna go, go ahead and discard this liquid culture and start over. So what I usually do is just fill it up, you know, with some bleach, so it'll kill all of the bacteria that's in there, and then I'll dump it down the drain. But that's right here, um, showing the importance of doing the quality control. So I'm still gonna move forward with my Morel liquid culture because that's going outside anyway and it's gonna be exposed to lots of bacteria and hopefully beneficial bacteria. So I'll go ahead and make some um, sawdust spawn and some grain spawn and then I'll show you the media extractor. All right guys, so it's been about a week since I inoculated that Morcella liquid culture. You can see it's starting to get very concentrated. Um, I just sterilized about 30 jars of uh, sawdust spawn and then I've got a bunch of grain spawn that I'm going to be using in my production but I'm also going to inoculate some of the Mercella on the grain spawn and then I'm going to be expanding some into uh, buckets probably in about two or three days when the weather gets a little nicer uh, it's, it's pretty cold outside right now and I don't want the mycelium to freeze right away but I'm going to go over how to use this uh, lure lock pipette in combination with the media extractor I uh, also produced a lot more liquid culture for the cordyceps I'm gonna be uh, giving this another try since my previous uh, inoculation was contaminated I cleaned out this thoroughly and produced a lot more liquid cultures that I'm gonna be doing today as well but my main focus right now is to show you how to use this uh, media extraction device so I'll flip this camera around and go through how to inoculate a bunch of these uh, sawdust spawn jars okay guys so the first thing I'm gonna do is transfer the extractor from this sterilized liquid culture onto our Morcella liquid culture so I have a uh, sterilize this extra cap here to cover this two liter bottle of liquid culture that I sterilized and then I'm going to be switching over to this very thick bottle of Morcella liquid culture And then I'm going to try to position it so that it will be easy to extract media and inoculate the sawdust spawn over here. Try to get this going again. You can see right here, this is where the uh, the media is going to be extracted from. So I like how it's set up down in the corner so you can get all the very last bit. 
Um, Get in some little bit of mixing. So you can see all of that healthy mycelium right there. Um, there's a little bit of air that you could push out, but that all came from there. And if you look at the setup, there's a 0.2 micro uh, nanometer pipe uh, filter right here. Or, and then that filters the air as it's drawn in through the top and then there's a backflow preventer here so that this area is the priming area for the extraction so then I'm just gonna go ahead and start inoculating these sawdust cultures um, I did them on the drier side so I could inoculate quite a bit of mycelium I'm gonna try to do 20 mils Okay, so there you have it. Um, it took me about 10 minutes to inoculate all of these jars of um, sawdust spawn using the liquid mycelium. So I really like the fact that you can use this in conjunction with the stir bar. Um, it didn't seem to interfere at all, which is really good. Uh, all my poles were pretty homogenous, so all of these jars should not um, colonize at the same rate. Some of the problems I've had in the past by using just a, a pipe pad and uh, aspirating from inside the bottle is that you don't get that homogenous uh, draw every time. So that's really advantageous if you're going to be making a lot of liquid cultures like I do um, pretty often, especially if you're doing like a bunch of syringes of the same culture. Um, a couple other ideas I have that I'm going to be uh, working on shortly is the implication of a peristaltic pump. So you can automate this process using a peris peristaltic pump and possibly a needle to extract into um, some of the lids that I, I just produced for um, sterilization purposes. And 
I really like doing my QC out of here too because just like um, extracting all of these liquid cultures, you're getting a better representation because the stir bar is mixing up the solution. So if you have any bacteria or yeast, it's gonna show up um, where if you take QC too early on some of these other jars that I usually do, um, there's a potential that you could miss uh, some of the bacteria and then that will you know, grow inside the syringe and then you'll be wasting all of that time and material. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm, I can't stress any more important um, it's very important to QC your liquid cultures, especially before you go and, you know, inoculate a bunch of these jars, but these are all going to be going outside around my yard. I'm pretty excited. Uh, hopefully I can get some mycelial networks of morels. Um, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. Um, share this video if you think other people would find it useful subscribe if you're looking forward to more videos like this um, I really enjoy you know sharing my knowledge and I really get a lot of feedback from you guys which helps me learn too so um, I'm gonna go ahead and inoculate the rest of these grains and I've still got a bunch of the grain growing from our, uh, our breeding project that I'll be updating on uh, pretty pretty soon so um, much love <laughs>